So this is the Ninja Foodie Max Dual Zone Air Fryer. My wife and I purchased this, so we've not been sponsored by Ninja for this video. We've been using it for about a week now. We've actually used it every day, a couple of times a day even. So I think that I'm at a point now where I definitely want to share some thoughts with you. But just a few technical specs before I get into that. So this air fryer does use a smart cooking system. As you can see, there are two drawers for combined capacity of nine and a half liters, which makes this product suitable for up to eight people. There are six functions in total that you can select from. They are max crisp, air fry, roast, bake, reheat and dehydrate. We haven't actually tested out the dehydrating yet, although it is something my wife wants to give a go. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is actually our first air fryer and it has taken a little bit of getting used to, not least of which because the cooking times with this are a little bit different than what you might expect if you've only been cooking with an oven. Fortunately, it does come with this handy booklet and we've been using this a lot. This comes with loads of information on cooking times and temperatures for different types of food. And if it's not even mentioned in here, then you can just use the general guideline of reducing cooking time with this air fryer by about 25% as to what's stated on the food packaging. Now there are two helpful buttons here on the air fryer which are sink and match. So for example, let's say on drawer one, you needed to air fry for 25 minutes at a temperature of 170 degrees. And yet in drawer two, you wanted to perhaps go at 160 degrees for 15 minutes. Then hitting the sink button will make sure that everything finishes at the same time. So the first dinner that we cooked with this air fryer was sausages and roasted veg. We used the left drawer for the sausages and the right drawer for the veg. And in the end, it worked really well and the dinner was absolutely delicious. The sausages, no problems with those whatsoever. We put them in for the dedicated or sorry the specified time as mentioned in the book here and they cooked beautifully. For the roasted veg we did cut some carrots. Unfortunately I think we cut them a little bit too thick and they did need a bit of an additional time in order to get them just right. One thing I will say is that roasted veg with this air fryer will be very crunchy, at least that's our experience, and we enjoy it like that, that's how we like it. And then we did some mashed potato, which we had to do on the hob for that meal. Now, next up, we wanted to try something a little bit different. So we had some cookie mix in the cupboard, ready-made cookie mix, we just needed to add a little bit of water to that. And normally, you'd make your cookie shapes and then put that into the oven for, I think it was about 15 minutes. Now, what we did instead was just dumped the whole cookie mix into one of the trays to see how it would cook. We didn't even bother, you know, putting it into circular cookie shapes. So we did need to put a baking liner at the bottom of the tray. That was actually instructed again in this manual here. So we followed that. The only thing is, I think we did slightly overcook. And this is where we are still just getting used to how powerful this air fryer is. We reduced the cooking time from 15 minutes to about 12 minutes. That's what we set this to. But the cooking still came out slightly overdone. Now, don't get me wrong, it was still absolutely delicious. But if we were going to use that method again with this air fryer and cook that cookie mix, I would probably set it to 11 or even 10 minutes. So the next thing we did for dinner with the air fryer were some chicken breasts and these still had the skin on them. So we really wanted to try and get that skin nice and crispy. And with this meal, we also wanted to try some roast potatoes and cook those in the air fryer too. Now, this was the first time really testing out that sink function that I mentioned. And I've got to say, it actually all worked really well. The only thing is, is something I would do different next time. We started off with the chicken breasts facing skin down onto the crisping plate. And that's because we thought it would actually crisp that skin a little bit easier. There was actually no need to do that. In fact, we ended up turning the chicken breasts around halfway through cooking. So the skin's facing up and they actually crisped out a lot nicer then. Now, the roast potatoes were absolutely beautiful. This did those so well, so perfectly. They're probably some of the best roast potatoes I've had in a while. The chicken breast was lovely too, really, really nice. We did just brush over a little bit of oil along with some salt and pepper onto the chicken breasts before popping those into the fryer. But then something else we did with this meal, once the potatoes were cooked, we put some kale, just kale out of a bag, into this, 
with some oil and some seasoning, some salt and pepper, and roasted that for, I think it was six or seven minutes. That was absolutely delicious. Even our baby, who's only eight months old, loved that. And you know what kids are like when it comes to that sort of green food. It was really, really tasty. I'm not a kale fan, but that worked well. But we've also been using the bake function. Something that we love doing now in the mornings is putting some bread breakfast products such as croissants or pano chocolates into this. And you can just get the frozen ones, that's what we do. Take them out of the bag, stick them in here, and in 10 minutes they are absolutely delicious. In fact, this is really good because the pano chocolates that we get, they take 22 minutes in the oven okay the standard oven and that's not including 10 minutes to preheat the oven so you're looking at over 30 minutes with this no need to preheat just put those frozen products directly into one of these drawers put it onto the bake option 10 minutes that's all it needs they come out absolutely beautifully i love them the wife loves them the kids certainly love them and in fact even if that's all we use this air fryer for we'd be happy with it but of course it does so much else as well and it's just a huge help when it comes to cooking our evening meals i should mention as well we haven't used this yet but it does come with this temperature probe which just plugs into the front here and this is going to be helpful especially if for example you are roasting a chicken and that's something else that i'm looking forward to trying in this you can roast up to two chickens in this because there's two drawers at any one time with each chicken weighing up to, I think it's 1.5 kilograms. So some pretty decent size roast chickens there. But overall, our first impressions of the Ninja Foodie Max Dual Zone Air Fryer have definitely been positive. There's a whole lot more that we're going to be testing out with this going forward. I'll probably make more videos as well as we do so. But from what we've seen so far, we definitely recommend it. We've been having a lot of fun with this and it surprised us in many ways. So thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you next time.